Hello friends, my name is Dr. Puru Dhawan and today in this video I will tell you about what kind of diet should be given to a kidney failure patient. Because in a kidney failure patient, diet is very important. Diet plays a very important role. With the help of diet, we can control lots of material, waste material in the body like ketamine, urea, sodium, potassium, calcium, everything can be controlled if we give a proper kind of diet. So let's start with ketamine. Ketamine is a type of protein. It's a waste material produced by muscles during muscle metabolism. So if a patient take large amount of protein, it will convert it into ketamine during muscle metabolism. So we have to avoid extra amount of ketamine production in the body. We have to cut down the amount of protein intake in the diet. And what kind of food item contains large amount of protein? And that is your non-veg material like fish, chicken, mutton, pulses, cheese, dairy products all these items contain large amount of protein so we have to cut it down when we cut it down what will happen there will be no extra production of the kidney in the body there will be production but not extra because when the kidney are failing the level of ketamine increases but when the patient take large amount of protein it will also increase the production of the ketamine and when the level of ketamine increases it will give us message that kidney are failing but actually Ketamine is producing more in the body, not kidney are not failing, but production of the ketamine has been increased because we have taken large amount of protein. So we have to cut it down. But our whole body is made of protein. If we don't take protein and what will happen? Now the question arises, when we don't take any kind of protein in our diet, what will happen to our body? Because our whole body is made of protein. When we don't take protein, what will happen? Carbohydrate, which we are taking in the form of wheat and rice will convert it into the protein as per the body's requirement. Overloading of protein won't happen and it will help the body to control the level of the ketamine. It will help the body to control the production of the ketamine in muscle. So all patients of kidney failure are advised to cut down the amount of protein and if we have to take the protein, protein should be low density protein because there are two types of protein. One is low density protein and another is high density protein. Low density protein is, is a protein which is easily digestible, easily absorbable by the body and it doesn't create any kind of too much amount of ketamine and waste protein in the body. Other hand, there is a high density protein which is heavy to digest, hard to digest, hard to absorb and it produces large amount of waste material in the body and which will be accumulated because our kidney are not functioning well and once this accumulation of the waste material will happen it will cause further complication so we have to select low density protein now the question arises what food item contains low density protein all kind of pulses contain low density protein milk contain low density protein on the other hand egg fish chicken mutton contains high density protein so all the patient who need protein in the body will take only pulses not all uh, non veg material like you know uh, meat chicken fish so if the body of a kidney failure patient requires protein we will provide only low density protein because it's safe for them now on the screen there is a chart what kind of protein can be given what kind of protein can be given to a kidney failure patient now let's move to the potassium. Potassium is a thing which is more dangerous than ketamine because when the level of the potassium increases, it may cause heart attack in a kidney failure patient. And the question arises why? Potassium in the right amount give power to the muscles to move. But when the level of the potassium increases, it causes muscles fatigue. And our heart is also made up of muscles. When the, and when the level of the potassium increases, it causes heart fatigue, which eventually leads to heart attack. So we have to control the potassium. And potassium is a thing which is present in each and every food item, whatever we eat. But in few food items, it contains in a large amount and in few food items, it contains in the lower amount. So we have to select low potassium food item in for a kidney failure patient. Now question arises, how we can select food item which are low in potassium? So in case of vegetable, always remember very simple rule. Always avoid rooty and leafy vegetable. Any vegetable which is grown below the surface of earth contains potassium in high amount like potato, sweet potato, turnip. All these vegetables contain potassium in high amount. But there are few exceptions also like your radish, carrot, onion, garlic. They contain potassium in a lower amount and that can be given to a kidney failure patient. And leafy vegetables like spinach, mustard, coriander, parsley, they also contain potassium in high amount and that's why they should be avoided in a kidney failure patient. Rest of vegetables which are grown as a fruit on a plant or creeper can be easily taken like your brinjal, tomatoes, 
your uh, bitter ground, round ground, snake ground, any kind of vegetable which is grown as a fruit on a plant or creeper can be easily taken. So whenever you go to the market to purchase the vegetable, always select those vegetables which are grown as a fruit on a plant or creeper. Avoid fruity and leafy vegetable. It's simple for a selection of the vegetables. Now let's move to the fruit. What amount of fruit should be given to a kidney failure patient? In a kidney failure patient, when the patient takes lesser amount of fluid, what will happen? The amount of urine production will be low. And if the production of the urine will be low, lesser amount of creatinine will excrete through the urine, which will cause elevation in the level of the creatinine. And if the patient takes large amount of fluid, what will happen? Because kidney are not functioning well and the kidney has functioned to control the level of fluid in the body, which will not will be maintained well. It will cause accumulation of the fluid in the body and which will be seen as a pedal edema, you know, swelling around the legs. There will be overloading of the fluid which will cause high blood pressure which will cause pressure on the kidney and which will cause further damage to the kidney that means in either way if we take lesser amount of fluid we are failing our kidney if we take large amount of fluid it will cause further complication so we have to select we have to take correct amount of fluid and each and every patient of kidney failure has a different fluid requirement because some patient lives in a summer climate some lives in a winter climate so the amount of fluid taken by both the patient can't be same because the requirement in a patient who is living in a summer climate is high the patient who is living in a cold climate is low so we have to understand our body first body has some kind of sensor which tell us about the amount of fluid and that is our lips our throat when the lips are dry the throat is dry that means body requires fluid and when the body requires fluid fluid should be given but the amount the quantity which we taking at a single time that should be not more than 50 ml so we can take 50 ml of water at a time we have to wait till the body assimilate that fluid and filter it out through kidney again we can take 50 ml of fluid because our throat is dry our lips are dry we can take it again so we can take any amount of fluid but make sure we can take 50 ml of water in any frequency but we can't take 500 ml in a once because it will cause pressure on the kidney it will cause accumulation of the water in the body so we have to avoid this kind of habit now let's move to the sodium sodium is a thing which body doesn't produce so it will come only from the outside food material and one food item which contains put sodium in high amount and that is your salt sodium is a thing which controls blood pressure in the body if the level of the sodium increases it will result in high blood pressure it will cause accumulation of the water in the body because it promotes edema to control blood pressure to control amount of sodium in the body we have to control the amount of salt intake what we do in our whole diet so all kidney failure patients are advised to take pinch of salt in each meal and what kind of salt should be given that is also a question now in market there is multiple type of salt is available one is sea salt another is iodized salt another is uh, himalayan salt which is also known as pink salt so at science and Divini, we advise all kidney failure patients to go for pinch of Himalayan salt because Himalayan salt contains sodium in lower amount it will help the patient to control the level of blood pressure and if the level of potassium is high in your KFT report then go for only for iodized salt which is pure form of NaCl it can, doesn't contain any kind of potassium so it will help the body to control the level of potassium in the body and if the level of potassium is in the range then you can go for Himalayan salt so always keep this thing in the mind we have to switch the salt according to the KFT report if the level of the potassium is high then we will go for iodized salt if the potassium is in the, in the range then we will go for Himalayan salt this will help the patient to control the level of sodium and potassium simultaneously now let's move to the phosphorus. Phosphorus is the thing which replaces calcium from the bone. And when the calcium has been replaced by phosphorus, the bone becomes soft, the bone becomes brittle. To avoid this kind of complication, all kidney failure patients are advised to avoid all kind of dairy products because they contain phosphorus in high amount, like your curd, cheese, buttermilk, because they contain in phosphorus in high amount, first thing. Second, all food items contain phosphorus. That's why all kidney failure patients are advised to take phosphorus binder during their meal. So when we take phosphorus binding during meal, what will happen? This 
phosphorylated binder will bind all the phosphorylated present in the meal and it will be excreted through our excreta it will doesn't absorb by our body that's why we have to take phosphorylated binder on a daily basis when the kidney are failing the bones become weak the bones become soft the question arises why this is happening because kidney activate the inactive form of vitamin d and when the vitamin d become activated it will help the body to deposit calcium on the bones and because kidney are failing this activation of the vitamin d is not happening that's why all kidney failure patients are advised to take calcium and vitamin d so that this can be avoided now i hope you have understand what kind of diet should be given to a kidney failure patient if you have any kind of doubt query regarding kidney failure how we can control the level of creatinine in urea in a kidney failure patient you can simply call our doctors on the number given below you can share your reports your kft report your ultrasound anything via whatsapp on this number our doctor will call you back they will make you understand what how we can control the level of creatinine in a kidney failure patient with this allow me say goodbye see you in the next video till then namaskar